Before I talk about how to use the checkboxes and marketing positions, I'd like to show you where you can actually access them. If you go from the dashboard to the forms area, you'll see pop-ups, embedded forms, and promotions. Well, you can use the settings with the embedded forms and pop-ups, but not really with the promotions. Because if you visit the promotional pop-ups, you'll see that they usually have buttons on them and no subscription forms. That's just how they work. It's usually some kind of promotion or special offer or download a mobile app pop-up or join the webinar, etc., etc. So you don't really need those here. So let's go back to the forms area here and let's go to sites now. And here we have landing pages and websites. In both cases, you can add a form. And in these forms, you can also use those settings that I'm going to talk about in a moment. So let's first go to an embedded form. This is your embedded form. To set those checkboxes, to set those permissions, just go to settings here. And here you have all the permissions, all the checkboxes. Now, if you go to a pop-up, it's a little different here. You're in the design area here. If you go a little lower here, you have sign up form settings. And here are your checkboxes. Now, this is a landing page. If you have a form on your landing page, like this one here, just go ahead and click the little pencil button to edit it. And instead of the settings, go to the form. And at the bottom, you have form settings. Same thing. All the checkboxes are here. Now, this is a website. And you can add a form, but sometimes you have these hero blocks where you have multiple things in one block. For example, the sign-up form. Well, you do, what you do is click the edit button by the block. And again, here is the form and here are the form settings. And that's pretty much it. This is where you can find all these settings in every pop-up website or landing page. Now let's go through them. Here we have a privacy policy. If you click this, you'll see that you have a little text over here and you can edit the text. For example, if you have the privacy policy text here, you can link it to your actual privacy policy. Put in the link. I like it always to open in a new tab. Insert it and there you go. You have a little link there. Now I'm going to cancel this. Go back to the settings here. Form. Form settings. Okay, I'm going to take out this privacy policy so it's a little more cleaner. Confirmation checkbox. This is something, this is a checkbox for some situations where you where your subscriber has to click that checkbox before they can actually subscribe. Then we have hidden segmentation fields. What happens here is, for example, if you're running a, a pet store, right? Let's choose field. And in your database, you created a, a field called pet. And then you can assign the value, for example, dog. And in this case, this would be a website about dogs, or this would be a page about dogs and someone who subscribes here they would have that value in the pet field in your database the dog value it will be input into the database so that's what you can do with this hidden segmentation field let's take that out and marketing permissions fields gdpr so if you're just going to send the emails to your subscribers you don't really need these checkboxes but if you're going to be doing more things like for example sending text messages or or other ways of marketing communication, well, then you need those checkboxes. But if you're just gonna send them emails, you just put what you're sending in this description here. For example, what do we have here? Subscribe and get healthy nutrition, mindfulness and functional fitness exercises delivered to your inbox, right? The more detailed it is, the better, of course, and then you do not need these checkboxes. In, in terms of GDPR, of course. In your country, you might have slightly different laws where, where you will need checkboxes, even for uh, a normal email. You might need that. Then we have interest groups. Let's take this out. Interest groups, these are basically groups or, or tags. And when someone subscribes, because in MailerLite, groups and tags are ba basically the same thing. We call tags groups. So when someone is signing up, they can choose the group they want to join. And these are the default names of the group. You can, you can add more. For example, you're not going to add a blacklist group here, of course. And you can also delete them. You can also move them up and down with this drag and drop feature or with these arrows here. And also, you don't actually have to use the name of the group. You can change the name of the group. As with the example of, of the pet store, right? You can have dog, for example. Then you can have cat. And, I don't know, bird or birds. 
right? And the question could be, do you have a cat, dog, or bird? Let us know what you have. Then this is the type of newsletter you're going to get about cats, dogs, or birds. Um, I would not change it here. I would prefer to have the name of the actual group, the name of what it's going to go in here, just so I don't get confused in the back end of MailerLite when I'm organizing the groups and everything so I know what is what. But I just wanted to show you that you can actually do this. Then you can also have hidden groups. For example, very similar to with the hidden fields, you can hide a group, in which case I would probably just choose one, not to, not to make it so complicated. For example, dog, and this would be hidden. Of course, you see it here because you're editing it, but your website visitor is not gonna see this hidden group. And what happens is they subscribe and they get added automatically to that hidden group. The difference between a group and a field is when you're adding some information to a field of a user, then you're actually adding it to a database. If you're adding it just this group, then it's just in your MailerLite account. Uh, when you're exporting your user later on and exporting that field, you will have access to that field. So depending on what you actually want to do in the future, you might want to use a field or a group. All right, and again, let's get back to the form, form settings, take out these interest groups, and then we have reCAPTCHA. Sometimes you get spam bots adding emails to different lists. You know, no one likes that. Double opt-in helps with that, but sometimes these bots are getting, uh, sometimes they're more intelligent, and this I'm a robot reCAPTCHA helps out with that. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please click subscribe, use the little bell icon. You can also catch us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, use the little subscribe link in the description to sign up to our newsletter. Thanks again, and see you in the next video.